back to the Bullhucker Podcast, and Happy New Year. I hope your uh, 2021 was awesome. Uh, before we get started, we have a few, we don't have any guests today, just all co-hosts. I'm Moose Lundstrom. I'm Adam Vokey. Michelle Staley. And I'm Dizzy Kudrin. So what we're doing this for the next two episodes, to start January off, to start 2022 to off, two two off. <laughs> <laughs> we're off to a great start. <laughs> to start 2022 off, I'm going to fuck this podcast up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're going to do. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about our favorite stories of 2021. So, hold, okay, that's, yeah, don't. <laughs> we've, had, we've had to slap Michelle around many times already. <laughs> and she still hasn't worked. She's been here three minutes. <laughs> so these are the, the hosts. Uh, actually, in, at the end of the next episode, because there's be two episodes to this, first two episodes of the season, uh, I've done a calculation. I've actually went through and I've done the math on all the statistics mm. and uh, who sucks and who doesn't. <laughs> um, but I can tell you this, uh, as a little oh. teaser, there are lifetime two hosts of the Bullhooker uh, podcast that have winning records. Only two. Oh. And there's been, counting me, 10 of us to actually be hosts on this. Wow. Right. Yeah, it's only two of us. Two of us. Pretty much, no, it's not. I think I know one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, no, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you know one because he brags about it all the time. And that's why I hate him so much. So, um, but, but also, I want to say that before we get started, this was hard for me to do, to pick yeah. two episodes. Because um, all but one, I've been into. So there's been a lot of fun stories. And as I've been going by and like doing that and just re-watching them, uh, for me, it was tough because I, there, I'm going to have a few honorable mentions, too, of <laughs> ones that I kind of swapped in and out. The two I picked, I picked for very specific reasons. So we're going to get to that. Um, how about you? It's kind of the same way. Like, the ones I picked, one of them just cracked me up. We had a, And we, when the story was going, we had a good time riffing off of it and joking yeah. about it. The other one is something I could see the person telling the story actually <laughs> – that happen, happening right. to her because that is like such a her thing to do or right. have mm-hmm. happen so <laughs> she's we'll, like mm-hmm. and we'll get to that michelle uh well it's interesting because i just picked one recently right. uh, probably because i can remember it and i'm just messing i'm teasing <laughs> <laughs> i'm just teasing but i thought uh, the one was pretty like a pretty cool story to actually have an experience like this and then the other one i mean the girl just i mean she cracks me up right. she just and just imagine her having the experience she had, and this is what you do on a daily basis. <laughs> right. You know. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm the same. Like, I feel like, <laughs> excuse me, one of them was just like, no brainer. This is the one I'm going to do because I couldn't stop thinking about it. Mm-hmm. And then the other one, I'm the same way. Like, I just, I want to be best friends with this girl. <laughs> and when we get there, she'll know why. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Easy peasy. Easy peasy. So, um, and I agree. And most women that watch the podcast have her marked on her po- her particular episode. She was mm-hmm. she's probably one of the fan favorites. Back off, girl. She's mine. She- <laughs> <laughs> snap, snap, snap. <laughs> so we all picked our two favorite episodes. I had like twenty episodes. I like yeah. our, our stories, but we all picked two. Um, we're gonna do one today and then one next week. So we're all gonna do one, and then there's an extra one. Uh, two people that aren't here got to pick. My mom is one of them because my, she's obviously the biggest mom. fan of this podcast. Yeah, she mom. watches every one and, you know. Biggest fan. Yeah, she yeah. is. And uh, if I well, wouldn't you would have, hope. You would hope. <laughs> she was like, that bitch, that just sucks. Actually, I have the last call on the home that she'll go into, so <laughs> she better hope. Okay. I love you, mom, but, man, I will sell you out. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, we uh, the next one for next week, we'll get into who we picked for that, uh, one of our fans of the podcast and who follows it. it. So. Nice. All right, for the first uh, episode, pick it out, Adam. Which one do you want to listen to? I want to do Naked and Afraid. Naked and Afraid. <laughs> All great. right, let's check this out. I want to go Naked and Afraid with my dog. Yeah, I figured that'd be first. <laughs> yeah. Good that's choice that. avoiding the bull hucker right off the top. <laughs> yeah. 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 Here, we go. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. That's a good strategy. That's yeah. what I would do if I was yeah. on that side. Yeah. 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 yeah, so Naked and Afraid with my dog. So to set up a little context, uh, we had a... Not a rescue bulldog, but we were his, he, we were his second home. We were his third home. Mm-hmm. Uh, his name was Diesel. He's passed away since then. But in a previous life, he was a like blue ribbon show dog. Purebred, had the paperwork, all this stuff. And it just went on all these dog shows and, and got all kinds of accolades. One day coming back from one of the shows, he jumps out of the back of their van or truck or SUV, 
tears his ACL. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Non-contact injury, right? right it wasn't right. even in the show. Right, right. So he's got a big old Frankenstein scar. They, they paid thousands of dollars to get him back out there. But obviously, because of that scar, he'll never be prime anymore, right? right. So I got him for a discount. He's a good dog. Uh, the first day we got him, we picked him up in, I think, brush or something like that. And we grabbed Wendy's on the way out and came back home. We're downstairs in our living room. We're eating dinner. And he charges me for a chicken nugget because I dro- like, <laughs> dropped it, which how, is rare, right? A body like this. You don't miss a lot of food. How big a dog is this? He was 75, 80 pounds. He was an English bulldog, right? Okay. Yeah. okay. So, I mean, just big enough gotcha. to, to oh, yeah. uh, like flex at you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he, he charged me for a chicken nugget, and I've known him for about four hours. And he's, <laughs> <laughs> that's yours, yeah. right? So that's he, how it started. He established the alpha male dog right away with you. Oh, that's what happened. Did. Like, yeah. this is my house now, Tyler. But you know? he, he screwed up because he sized up me and not my wife, and right. she runs the place. Right. Everybody knows that. Right. So he thought, right. he's like, I got, oh, no, there's somebody else. She's in charge. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I got the second guy. Yolanda. <laughs> Yolanda, the dog is, like, following me again. <laughs> he actually listened to her. Uh, more, which was so weird because she would always talk to him in Spanish. I was, hey, he's an English bulldog, all right? <laughs> we speak American here. Right? You have your breeds. This one's mine. And the dog with the alumni <laughs> point for telling us, pendejo. <laughs> so, uh, fast forward another year. He's now become a good friend. He's, my boy's tackling him and doing all this stuff and just beating the crap out of him. He just takes it. And one night we're sleeping upstairs doing our thing hear a loud crash. I'm like, well, that can't be good. It's like, I didn't hear the dog. All right, so he's, it's probably him getting into something. I hear a second loud crash. Now, we have one of those like uh, quad level houses, right? So it's kind of offset. So I'm about okay. 10 steps down it from bedroom to living room, 10 steps down, right. living room to family room, right. so on and so forth. So I'm like, okay, wife is like, you gotta go. I was like, I, who, who knows what that could be? No. I could get murdered. Right. Right. right, right. But you like, still got to go. Yeah, yeah. He took out the dog. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's like, he'll fight you for a chicken. No, you That's wake right. him up. I mean, he'll handle it. That's right. I was like, oh, okay. So the first thing I do, I get up and I have my, it's winter. I have my pajama bottoms on and I just drop them to the floor. I was like, what are you doing? I'm like, uh, I'm going to go downstairs, obviously, see what's going on. Check on Diesel. Why did you take your pants off? Because nobody wants to fight the naked guy. Right. And right. I don't want to be there. Right. And maybe he doesn't want to see me. And it's not. We'll, just, right. we'll call it even. Right. right? It's a TV. Naked Tyler. I'm out. I'm, I'm good. I got all I need. I know I'm here to rob you. And I don't want to be like weird about it. But why is your dick out, man? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is weird. Yeah, yeah. I'm a case in this yeah, place. Yeah. You're always wearing pants. And it looks like, it looks like semi-chub at this point. So I'm even a little more concerned. You know? you it's like, winter time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You had right. swim trunks in the shower last week. Right. I saw that. Right. Where, where is this coming from? Right. So I'm downstairs. I have the, the cliche baseball bat. Right. Diesel and nothing. I'm like, Diesel and nothing. And out of the darkness, he sneaks up and you just hear his feet. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the noise. And they're just, oof. And he barks at me. I'm like, ah! yeah. Almost peed myself right there on the kitchen right. floor. Right. Turns out we have a cat who knocked off a bottle off the table. It shattered. He freaked out. He knocked over a chair on the way out the door. <laughs> So naked and afraid with my dog. I'm going to fast forward one more time. We're going to go one more year forward from all of this. We've laughed it off. We've told all of our friends. And we had in the neighborhood, which is weird because we live over in the reservation of uh, Fort Morgan section. So I'm surrounded by cops in all kinds of different directions. They all live out by me. Nice. And there was a lady who had broken into a house that just somebody forgot to lock their front door or never locked their front door because they felt safe at all times. Right. So there was like this fear in the neighborhood that somebody was going to break in again. And we heard weird noises and everything just kind of puts you at a heightened sense. And one day we hear a noise and it just turns out to be the FedEx guy. But when the noise happened, dog gets up, starts barking, right. lets us all know. It was, hey, good job, Diesel. Good job. Right. Go over to the fridge. Up, up top, we keep the treats above it. We're out of treats. I grab just like a hot dog out of the, the little drawer. Throw him the hot dog. He decides not to chew it. And it goes straight down popsicle style. I mean, I've now been there. he can't breathe. <laughs> I've been there. I've been there. By the way, <laughs> he's got this wheezing, <gasps> <gasps> laying on the floor. You see him kind of like wobble and get a little loosey goosey. Right. I have to perform CPR on my dog, so I get down. I get underneath him. And, <laughs> yeah. 
And there it goes. <laughs> and it slides across the floor. Hey, oh, God. I stand up, and he runs back for the hot dog and just goes right forward again. It doesn't even slow him down. Almost died. He doesn't even care. So, yeah, naked on one and afraid with the other. I thought my dog was going to die that And day. dog's like, every time someone breaks in this damn house, a wiener comes out one way or another. You know? So the whole time you're telling that last part of the story, I keep seeing your face on the dog. <laughs> Listen, man. I've been drunk and hungry, <laughs> and I pull the hot dogs, and I'm like, whoa, 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 like, a, like a Cheeto, but I, yeah, it's shame, you know? <laughs> Sometimes chewing's for, it's overrated. It's it just is, over, yeah. It's just time management. Do you snarf, still have him? Snarf it, No, he passed away about a year ago, okay, so we, we just lost him. Oh, it yeah. sucks, man. I'm sorry, man. No, it's, it's all right. He, like I said, very good dog. Kept the, kept the house safe. Like I said, the boy could tackle him and do whatever he wanted right. with him as he was growing up, and there were no issues, and... Like I said, try to give him a prize for saving the house. He tries to kill himself, so right. no more prizes. Right. Yeah, that's, prizes. yeah that's right. it. That was a uh, Naked and Afraid of Tyler Zink. That's my mom's favorite episode. That was her pick. Good pick. Nice. And I nice. asked her. I like that one. Yeah, she, uh, mom really liked Yolanda Zink. Her, his wife, who also came on the podcast, mm-hmm. was after him because she made him go first. Like, mm-hmm. oh, Tyler, go. And he had a lot of great episodes. Tyler's very funny, very smart, very witty. Uh, and then the dog with the hot dog. You guys have dogs, <laughs> right. yes? Yeah. Uh, there you read, yeah. you want God bless him. You no. Him. no. I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> Did you know you could give a dog Heimlich? I, you learn all kinds of weird shit on this podcast. See, I guess so. Educational as well. <laughs> right. right. If you watched the last episode of 2021, it was Ali Schneider. Yeah. And you and I learned something really weird about that episode. Yes, we did. You're right. Did you know if you drop money on a casino floor, it belongs to the casino? If you pick it up, they will charge you and kick you out of the casino? Uh-huh. Mm, you're in trouble. I did not know that. Right. And I also got to call something out, by the way. It's very cold in here, so there's a heater right here. So if you see an orange glow... <laughs> It's not a nuclear war coming at us. Okay. Like, why are they glowing? It's, it's in these stories, it's hell. So um, it was a great story, Tyler. That was mom's pick. Out of I made her. She's watched every one of them. It's great. Yeah, and she really well, liked the that. The part episode. you just you totally blew over because you were wanting to get to the hot dogs was <laughs> the fact that he strips down naked to go fight somebody. <laughs> right. I mean, that like logic in itself like, is like, awesome. Obviously, he had planned that out. Right. Like, okay. Yeah. Somebody breaks in here. I'm definitely getting naked. <laughs> But, you know, if you're really going to think that hard into it, why wouldn't you just go to bed naked every night? Well, yeah. because you don't plan on someone breaking in every night. Well. Okay, well, did you think about this? What if you are the intruder and he comes down and you're like, wait a minute, why is your wiener out? That's exactly <laughs> and it would throw you off. It would throw you off. Yeah. Yeah. And unless the intruder's naked, too. <laughs> yeah. then, <laughs> then that's a whole different thing. Whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, yep, yeah. yep, yep. Hey, man, why is your dick out? Why is your dick out? <laughs> This is my house, man. Oh my God. <laughs> Do I you live. want to have a sword fight or not? <laughs> <laughs> Did you come here to give me a raw banana fucking? Oh, my gosh. I'm going to get screwed twice tonight. Yeah. Where's the... I don't know if I'm happy or sad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, go talk to my wife, okay? <laughs> I'll fight you, but she's going to do the dirty work. Just yeah. kidding, yo. Just kidding. <laughs> Don't mess with my girl. You want to yeah. cut a bitch. That's what she'll do. Yes. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to mark down. I love down. it. Naked and Afraid off the books. Michelle, you want to pick a story? Um, Naked and Afraid. No, the, the one. A biker and a biker shotgun. And a okay, shotgun. Right. There we go. A biker and a shotgun. Mm-hmm. Okay. That Good was luck. actually my pick. Um, and I picked that. that. Allison Carell. Um, this one was going to be a pick at all to begin with. Um, my original pick, because I wanted to pick two stories one funny and one very serious story because right. i really really like when serious stories come to this podcast everybody with adam and i having our comedy background i think it's always a misconception that all we want to hear is funny stories right like right. they hear me and adam the two for the road thing they're like oh it's a mm-hmm. comedy podcast well we like it to be a comedy podcast i like to laugh i love funny stories you know but i also like a very serious story my original mm-hmm. pick for this was kelly pelton's angels among mm-hmm. us the yeah. story which if you are going to check this podcast out I probably should have actually uh, wrote the number down, but she's, let's say, 19, episode 19, somewhere on there. A story about when uh, she was pregnant and going to the school for, she was in an emergency room, right? Mm-hmm. Doing a, what do yeah. they call it? A uh, internship. An internship, yeah. yeah. And it was rough. There was some deaths, and she had a hard time handling it. And she's convinced that she was visited by an angel, you know? I and, love it. And yeah. I, it's a great story. And it's actually one of the true stories. I will mm-hmm. spoil it for that. So mm-hmm. that was my original pick. I ended up picking. A biker and a shotgun was close because Allison Guerrero comes on, and I think it's the hardest thing in the world to talk about abuse, mm. and especially when it happens to you. Yeah, you know. So I picked this one because I, I think it's a lot of 
took a lot of balls for Allison to come on and tell that story. You yeah. know, because that's mm-hmm. when you're in a vulnerable position, it's hard to tell people those stories because mm-hmm. it makes you look weak, kind of, you know, and it takes an amazing amount of strength to get that out. So, yeah. Did you by chance get to check that one out? Yeah, I did. It was. What'd you think? It, yeah, like you said, it's hard to talk about that and shed light on something so dark. Yeah. That it right. takes a lot of courage to bring that up mm-hmm. and talk about it. I would agree. I think she just like took her story and everything that happened to her, and she just kind of embraces it and like makes it yeah. who she is. Right. And I think that's good. And if you know Allison, she is she's a tough cookie. She really is. She's uh, I don't use the word outspoken, but she's not afraid to let her voice be heard. Mm-hmm. Anyway, you know she's she's a strong woman. You know what mm-hmm. I mean. So that's why I picked this story. But uh, we should have talked about it after we actually watched the clip. Let's check out the clip. Mm-hmm. I go with a biker and a shotgun. Um, a biker and a shotgun. So this is where I prefaced and said that we were going to get a little serious today and a little dark. I mean, serious, yeah, with your kid having surgery. This one, this one's pretty dark, though. So bear with me. I'm an open book. I'm always happy to share about my life. Um, for a biker and a shotgun. So to understand me a little bit, you would have to understand that my parents split up when I was young. One of my earliest memories of my parents is actually my dad throwing my mom through a window my mom chasing my dad with a ceramic spoon. You know, the, the, the Campbell's soup trains, the big ceramic ones, it was one of those spoons. So a big, big spoon. Um, fighting, and, like they're fighting. Yeah. And okay. so they split up when I was real little and my mom moved to Washington and I stayed in California with my dad. And I stayed in California with my dad. And um, then my dad met a woman who became my stepmother and she had sons and they became my stepbrothers. And that was not a great thing. Um, They were very, very abusive to me. Um, My stepmom would put her name on things in the refrigerator, and I wasn't allowed to have them, but my stepbrothers were. Um, She was basically trying to force me into anorexia so that my dad would send me away to a camp so she wouldn't have to deal with me. Um, So that was kind of rough. But the worst part about it was the younger stepbrother, who was seven years older than me. So the abuse began when I was about 10. Um, so that was a a choice, a decision I never got to make for myself. That that choice was taken for me at 10 and it continued for a couple of years. Now what's interesting about moving with my stepmother and we moved in with her, my dad knew the neighbor Mm -hmm. that she was next door to. His name was Sundance and I will never forget this man. And I have a wedding photo of when my mom and my dad got married right like a month before I was born. She's very pregnant. And they did that old timey photo, you know, with the guns and the Victorian dresses and everything. His nickname is Sundance or that's his name? I don't know his real name. That's, I don't, that's what they call him, the Sundance. Yeah, I don't know okay. if that's his real name or his nickname. Okay. Um, and he's actually in the wedding photo standing next to my mom. Now, they all used to roll bikes together. I mean, my earliest memory, I was on the back of an Indian. Like, I spent a lot of time on motorcycles. Well, Sundance lived next door. And my stepbrother also was in martial arts. And he really liked to use me as a practice dummy. Um, And he would chase me around and beat the hell out of me. And it was just, it was pretty bad. I mean, if we took a full body x-ray, I'm really curious what we would find. Well, this last time, I managed to get away out of the house. And the parents weren't home. The parents were never home. I managed to get away, and I ran out the front door, and he tackled me right onto the concrete pavement. And he flipped me over, and he sat on top of me. My arms are skinned up because I had put, you know, I braced my fall. And he had flipped me over, and I had my hands up protecting my head, and he was hitting me. And then, you know that, that sound that they say is the most unmistakable sound in a house? Do you know what that sound is? The click of a shotgun? The racking of a shotgun. Right. And that is what I heard. I heard the racking of a shotgun. And Sundance was standing next to me with the shotgun probably four or five inches from my stepbrother's head. And he said, if you ever touch her again, I will fucking kill you. Wow. Wow. My stepbrother conveniently moved out about a month later, and I have not seen him since. Really? How old were you at this period? At that point, I was a about 12 and so he's like 19 yeah wow so he ended up moving out and at 15 is when i finally got to re-meet my mom and i left Mm. california at 15 and i never looked back wow i don't speak to my dad i haven't for many many years is he still married to her he is 
Was that a problem with them? Did the, did the story ever come up to them that my there was a shotgun pulled on them? Stepmom, I don't know if that part ever did. My stepmom eventually found out and called me a whore at 11 years old and said I brought it on myself. I'm sorry, Allison. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Unless that story is the false one, then I'm taking my sorry back later, just so you know. <laughs> so we're clear, okay? No, that's a whole I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in. I am. All right, so that was the clip. Uh, a biker and a shotgun. Michelle, what did you think about that clip? You know, I think, because I do know... Um, Allie Allison, I do know her, and she is very strong. And I think probably when you go through something so so traumatic as that, especially in your youth, you definitely it forms you mm. at what what your personality, how you're going to be as an adult, and how you handle things in life. And one thing I will say about Allison is, you know, she's not afraid to use what she's been through or her story. So if it helps others, if it helps one person, if it, I mean. She comes across pretty like strong and she's but she has a big heart. She really really does. Right. You know, but going through what she went through with that it could have it could have really like wrecked her right. for the rest of her life, you know? All right. Let's get that a little more on with you a little straighter. Sorry. You're cool, a little straighter. I'm right. oh, sorry. <laughs> Boo yeah. There we go. There we go. It's, there we it's go. only been six right. months since I've been in radio. Can you tell? <laughs> you're, you're what is this thing? <laughs> Unidirectional. So <laughs> anyway, that was my pick. That was my first pick. Uh, and that's why I picked it because, you know, I really want to do uh, – if you're going to come on this podcast and you have a uh, serious story, I love it. And there's been a lot of people that came on, like Kelly, that had funny stories, serious stories. Mm-hmm. Chloe Hirschfeld yeah. uh, had a very serious – this kid went shitty story mm-hmm. and had some funny stories with mm-hmm. it. So that that's my favorite. Those are my favorite episodes, absolutely. So that was mm-hmm. my pick. Densia. All right. Um, I am going to go with – Splitting hairs. Splitting hairs. <laughs> <laughs> That's our Kelly Pelton pick. That was your pick, Michelle. Mm-hmm, it was. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to the clip. Check this so one. So I'm going to pick splitting hairs. Okay. Mm. <laughs> splitting hairs. The third, the other one I really want to hear, but I want that to be the last one. So. <laughs> that may not be as exciting as uh, you think. Okay. All right. Mm. <laughs> all right. So splitting hairs. This actually goes to where I'm working now. Um, <laughs> I work at a really great asthma allergy clinic. Anyway. So I'm the new fish. I'm brand new to the place. Everybody knows what they're doing. It's great. I'm like, yeah, I'm excited. I'm eager to get some stuff done. And right. so they're like, so today you get to do skin testing and really easy. It's, they're like, it's a straight arrow, 34 panel, and you just do scratch testing. And it's, anyway, it's really easy. I could go into that, but nobody wants to hear it. You scratch kids up. Is that what you do? I do. Yeah. And, and babies oh. and moms. Yeah. Oh my God. I don't. Yeah. All right. Listen, yeah. I, I don't feel anything, so I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, wow. As I said, again, takes so, a, spe- so takes a, robot a special Kellyan. someone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Someone's like, oh, it really hurts. I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, hold still. No, no, I kind of wanted to be a tattoo <laughs> artist at one point, too. So, hey. Did you? No, she did. Oh. Well, yeah, you know, I just make the dots. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Connect the dots. I'm like, <laughs> does it hurt? No. I think that's where it's like animal cruelty leads to like serial killers. So that might be like <laughs> mm-hmm, the list mm-hmm. right below animal cruelty. <laughs> yes. Anyway, I gotta scrape your baby. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Me. It's really not like that. It's right. just a little pick. Right. Okay. Anyway, okay. it's not a needle. But um, so my trainer, her name is Angelica. Real name? Wait, She's fabulous. Angelica. 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 Or if other people who can't pronounce her name, Herlica or. Angelica, I'm not even kidding, guys. Wow. Old lady comes in. She's like, Herlica, can you give me my shot today? And I'm like, What the fuck? Did she just call you Herlica? She's like, yeah, just go with it. I don't even want to just just go with it. Later, I'm going to give you a shot in the mouth to me Herlica again. That's what's <laughs> <Yeah>. going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Herlica, better known as Angelica, she's like, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, not Angelica, Angelica. See, I even screwed up her name. What's what up, Angelica? Heck? What's no, up? No, really. She, she, like, she even told me, she's like, I totally am going to listen to this. I'm like, <laughs> you should listen to all of them. They're great. But anyway. Thank you. So, yeah. So she's, she's like, um, I'm going to let you take lead on this. So just go do all this vitals, get everything done. So I go in, do everything. And I'm like, all right, we're going to go next door to the room. We'll do our skin testing. And I tell him everything from the waist up comes off. Keep your mask on, though, because we have to keep your mask on through this. Right. And he's like, okay, okay. And he's a little hesitant. I'm like, I'll step out and give you some privacy. I said, if you want a gown, and I'm like, can I say that to a guy? Like, can I give, offer him a gown? Right, right. I said, you just put it on, but leave it open in the back. So, because we do all the skin testing on the back. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, okay, okay. I said, I'll go get all the stuff and I'll be right so back. So he didn't want his upper body exposed. Not even a little okay. bit. I, I, <laughs> oh, oh, God. <laughs> 
anyway. You know what? Some, I mean, women are born with breasts. <laughs> us, some of us men have to earn them. You know what I'm saying? Be proud, dude. Be proud. Oh, God. Can I, can I interrupt real quick? Oh, please do. <laughs> so when I was on my way over here, <laughs> there's a guy tooling down flat on his big old bike. Like bicycle or motorbike? A motorcycle. Okay. And he's got his music blaring, and he has no shirt on. Oh, God. <laughs> And he is hairy, hairy, and round. <laughs> and what do, you, what, do you, what do you scream at him, Michelle? Tell me something. That'll make me proud. Like, hey, baby. No, <laughs> Shirt or bra, dude. One or the other. You got to pick. Like, I just want to floss. I just. Like, I, I, was, I was like, we, you're riding around without. Okay, no helmet, no shirt. And he had to pull his pants up at the stop. Oh, like, Lord, no. That, the plumber was hanging out. He wasn't crap oh, at all. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the plumber's the worst, man. Fatty sticks her finger in mine. It's horrible. <laughs> no. I do that. she's, that's how she's training I me. I do that to <laughs> Staley all the time. That's how she yeah. trains me. Tell me you didn't go. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, he did when on the bike. Yeah, I think oh, he did. Pretty sure. <laughs> then he fluffed his hair. <laughs> he had long grabbed, hair. Grabbed oh, his, it was on his chest. He grabbed his pick and he's like, <laughs> I can't make that up. I'm like, I had, it was like, did I just see what I thought I saw? I'm like, okay. He's trying to get some, he's trying to get some sun. He's <laughs> under all that fuzz. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna see him. You're gonna see him. Out. You're gonna have. You're gonna want to see. He's gorilla. gonna have bleached out gorilla man hair all over his body from this. Or he's gonna watch this podcast and then he's gonna be like, that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a hairy back. She's got a hairy back. <laughs> He's gonna be all sad, you know. <laughs> but hey, you know what? More power to him if he's if he's confident enough to ride around on his bike. Sometimes I think you just get old enough where you just don't care. Um, you just don't care. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. not, I'm not that way. Well, am I there yet? I don't know. Let my hairy back I out. I don't know. How hairy is your back? <laughs> <laughs> I have like four hairs on my back now. I'm the most hair- hairless chihuahua son of a bitch ever. Part the part Japanese. Oh, it's bad. Like I've had people like, do you shave your legs? I'm like, no. I'm just naturally this unhairy. Like you know, my puberty ought to set in any time now. You know. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> He's so disciplined. <laughs> oh well, when I was younger, I mean, this is great. Like I had like the stupid hairy legs. I'm like, man, I, t- <laughs> so, I look great. <laughs> <You're> like, <"Ew." laughs> now I'm like, I wish I could grow some hair. Be, you know, yeah, look at it right here. Yeah, no, yeah, it's all gray and horrible. But <laughs> anyway, just let it go gray. I think it's a long time we interrupted somebody. For Sorry, the story. but it's perfect because it, it is. It I mean, I, I had right to do a double take. Going. Okay, go ahead. So homeboy didn't want a yeah, He did or yeah. did not want one. No, and he's wearing okay. he's wearing a shirt, and I mean, he's got looking <gasps> normal hair on his arms. You know, I don't see any like hamburger coming out of his shirt up here back there I'm like you know it's good so <laughs> my uncle Sherm was I had a lot of that <laughs> hamburger, hamburger. hamburger. Yeah. so I go grab the trays and I come back in and I'm <laughs> like oh I don't <laughs> if, I'm so glad I had a mask because I'm sure in my mouth I was like <sighs> well do tell Kel, what is do happening tell. with this I have never seen back hair chest hair arm hair as thick and long <laughs> and curly, kinky as I had this man's really? back hair. It was everywhere, like everywhere. I kind of felt bad for the guy, right? And I'm like, so obviously he was a little self conscious. Well, too. I think he like trimmed because, she, but the best part is it was, <laughs> you can see kind of like, you know, where he kind of trimmed it down a little bit so right, it wasn't so right. hanging out or whatever. Anyway, right. so I composed myself and I'm like, okay, so I'm going to have you lay down on your stomach. Um, on, on the bed right there, and I'm going to get started. Do you have any questions for me? And he's like, yeah, um, I'm not sure if I was supposed to shave my back or anything. I'm, And I said, it's fine. We'll figure it out. It's not a big deal. I'm trying to be very professional. I'm not making him feel uncomfortable because mm-hmm. this is my first scratch test, for right. Christ's mm-hmm. sakes. Like, right. you know, right. make the guy feel, I'm already clammy and sweaty. Like, <laughs> how the hell am I going to do this? So right. in hell, Did you say, hey? I got that long thing. You've seen that infomercial for it? <laughs> the long shaver for the back. <laughs> Next time you're mowing your lawn, have your neighbor go over your back a little yeah, bit. So just yeah. lay down on your stomach. And, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I'm going over it in my head. How am I going to do this? Because you have to have a fairly decent surface with no hair to see any of these welts or anything coming up that, you know, after you apply the skin test and measuring, <laughs> you have to measure them too. So I'm like, how do I? If I, and then I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. So, and Helica just smiles really big at me and she's like, and she hands me 
a freaking razor. Oh, you had to shave his back. Oh my god! So, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so seriously, get out. I, no. So I, I'm like, did you get out? What's, got, what's that shaving cream? Bar- Barbazol or <laughs> what is that stuff? Oh my god! <laughs> Napalm. It sounds like. Well, and she just goes, and I'm like, Mm-mm. and she's like, I'm like, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean your back off with some rubbing alcohol, and I'm looking at her because I'm like, where do I go from here? Right. I really don't know where to go from here. So I, you know, little cotton ball and a little thingy. I'm like, and I look at her. I'm like, it's not working. Yeah. You know, I'm like. Help. Like, what am I supposed to do? Right, right. And she's like, you know, so she, she comes back and she has a, I'm not even shitting you, a comb. <laughs> she gives me a comb and she's like, I'm like, Mm-mm, I'm not brushing his back hair. I'm not going to freaking brush his back hair, guys. You want me to part his back? So she's like, she's, she's like, you know, she says, okay, sir, I'm going to show her how we need to do this. So she, she comes over like she's done this a hundred thousand times, pulls the comb down, takes this razor and she goes, and it's not doing much of anything and she looks at the razor and it is packed full it's oh. like did she wet his back down and put cream on it you just didn't dry dry oh. dry my friends dry that's a dick move at helica <laughs> well then i told her i said okay i'll be right Angelica, back whatever. <laughs> Herlica. <laughs> Herlica. So, so we go out and i'm like oh, what the hell are we supposed to do and she's like we gotta shave his back because we can't do this i mean because like when you do ekgs you gotta shave areas to put you know i mean sure. and you're just like oh god i'm so sorry i'm gonna give you some razor bumps here you mm-hmm. know or you can put some of the sticky stuff down and kind of rip it off and be like, congratulations, you just I got a free wax about that, job. But we Oof. can't share it. So <laughs> you're going to have to tell us later. Your waxing that's story. Oh, we'll that is horrible. You have to tell us. Okay. Anywho. So anywho, I'm like, do we have, do we have a razor? Do we have like a, an electric razor? We can trim it shorter, you know, down where we're going to do the panel just in those areas and then leave the hair kind of long, but enough that we can get skin tests. We're like, yeah, okay, that'll work. So I'm like, perfect. I'm like, solution, let's go. I'm excited. We're going to get this done. I go in there. I start the razor, you know, and he's like, are you shaving my back? And I said, yes, sir. We're going to just a little bit, you know, and he's like, okay. And he's like, he's really apologetic. He feels really bad about this. It would be very awkward. Very awkward. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And I, I go and I go, and he goes, I'm like, oh, and he goes, and he literally, he goes, he, out of his mouth, he goes, oh, son of a bitch. And I'm like, okay, this isn't going to work. <laughs> it was bad. It, it was Did so you bad. need the dog trimmers, dog clippers. <laughs> well, it was one of those hair trimmer looking things, you yeah. know? And I'm like. It clogged the trimmer. That's it was amazing. bad. It was so bad. And so I'm like, okay, let's, let's go for it. <laughs> Shame not. I took a pen and I started to split his hair, parting his hair. <laughs> Oh wiping the God. area, taking a marker, because you have to mark with the expo marker. And I start with a T, start, cause start with trees. And I'm like, um, yeah. <laughs> trying to make the, I'm like, I'm not going to be able to label this. You're going to have to help me remember what's what, because I hadn't had it memorized yet. Right, right. We proceed with the test to only follow, to go back in there. Dude's got a little blood next to where the first tree marker is at. And I'm like, this, this isn't even, I can't believe this is even happening. Right. And you have to do it on the back. <laughs> Always on the back. I don't want to know what his legs look like. <laughs> They're probably bald as hell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a little red mark. We do, we do like IDs on the arms and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That's where you go under the skin yeah. and just get a little bubble. But anyway, yeah. So we go back in and I look at Angelica and I'm like, you're measuring this shit. I'm not doing it. You're measuring. I can't. I'm going to lose it. I can't do it. Go in. We have this little measuring for the wealth and the wheel. She, <laughs> she literally has to try to move the hair and push this down to measure. It was the worst test we've ever done. The splitting hair man. We uh, split his hairs so and made him bleed. All right, there you go. And that was the uh, story of splitting hairs with Kelly Pelton. <laughs> so uh, Kelly Demner ended up with two stories on this out of three. Not too shabby. Right, not too shabby. Right, yeah. Yeah. Right at all. So uh, I'm sorry. I've always been starting. Go ahead, Dins. You started off. Well, okay. I was. I know Kelly, and I've known her for a while. And I knew, like, the profession she was in. But to hear this story told is... <laughs> was hilarious because in my mind like I could picture just this really really hairy man and just like you know a lot of discussion going on how is this gonna happen Mm -hmm. it's hilarious I love it especially if you know Kelly I mean she's very animated and she's very you know and the thing is is she said you you thought it was her story like that because she's so animated about things and you know I come from a family of hairy 
people. So it's like, <laughs> oh my God, was this one of my relatives? Part Sherman, part <laughs> I know. I'm like, was it another cousin? Oh, that's <laughs> funny. D- during that story, you made a comment about shaving his back. Mm-hmm. And I brought a visual aid. <laughs> what? This is what she was talking about for that you back shaver. Thing. I do. It's called a back blade. <laughs> and I have used it. I actually talk about it on stage, the use of this thing. Were but anyway, scared, were you scared to use it the first time? A little bit. And how long does that thing get? Holy shit! That's all. That's, do you do one <laughs> swipe and you're like, "Who? Where did this carpet yeah, come from?" Right? Yeah. So and it actually works. So yeah. Okay. But, you do one swipe, you're like it looks like you clubbed an ape. <laughs> the thing, and the thing is, is like my flexibility in the angle. There's like right here. There's one spot I never can get to. It's called your ass. <laughs> it's it's called, called your ass. ass. I'm say. like, this is my side, lower back. It's like yeah. the Bermuda Triangle. The LBH. Back the there. LBH. He's having just, a hard time getting to the LBH. I just couldn't get to it. Yeah. So but, I, I, I pictured in my head, you're like watching infomercials one night, and you're like, wait a minute. I need that. <laughs> Actually, I was scrolling two, Facebook, two but pay, same two thing. Two payments free? I'm <laughs> in. <laughs> I hope you get pulled over on the way home, and they find that on you. <laughs> I was doing a podcast. I'm showing three of my friends how I, I, I shave my ass with my ape club. Shave my ass. I swear, it's if you look at it, you'll find my DNA. <laughs> <laughs> wow, were you scared the first time you used that bad boy? Right? But it's You're like, what if I slip and fall or something? <laughs> <laughs> Do you hide what a cool from, death. Do you hide it from your daughters? I just yeah, have it. It's like what? up on top of the little cabinet they, thing in the bathroom. I'm thinking that thing may be nice. It's got a nice big wide blade and I can't hardly bend to shave the legs anymore. <laughs> and I can just do a few swipes and you are done. Well, if woo-hoo. I would have only known that before Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> For like four payments of 19.99, get your back shaving ape club. But if you call right now. <laughs> they threw in free blades. Free refills. No. Yeah, so. How much yeah. did that set you back, Adam? It was like 25 bucks. Well it worth it. Bad. Yeah. Well worth yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Deal it. So. It'd have been a deal at twice that price. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> so, Kelly Pelton, I'm going to tag you. Yeah. I hope you watch this episode and then when you go back to work, be like, yeah. Adam Vokey should have been the co host. We could have been. Yeah, that would have made it her job a heck of a lot easier. She'd have been a hero oh, if she sure. walked in with that thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean they should. But, but uh, from the sounds of things with that guy, I don't even know if that thing would have worked. <laughs> I yeah. I tape at the end of a stick like a like Gandalf the Grave and just <laughs> clink clink clink. Bring me the staff of hairlessness. <laughs> I think that dude needed sheep shears. Uh, uh, wow. So, but did you uh, you you watched the Kelly episode? Yeah, right? yeah, obviously you did because you saw that. So, uh, Kelly's was Kelly is fun, and I mm-hmm. I pride myself on being able to pick people for this podcast pretty well. And Kelly was one of the ones I really I wanted to reach out to right away because I I know Kelly through uh, I'm very good friends with the Dussos. And she was the sister-in-law to them. And so I, we've hung out a lot at family functions of theirs. And I always thought Kelly was funny, mm-hmm. you know. And she's yeah. always mm-hmm. very bubbly, very bright, very energetic. So mm-hmm. I thought, and she talks a lot of shit. <laughs> she does. <laughs> Doesn't she? Yeah, she does. Rightfully so. She has to do stuff to Harry men. So I'm yeah. telling you, man. She's, yeah. yeah, she talks a lot of shit. So <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> but that was, that was, uh, yeah, it was a great episode. I'm like, I love man, that I want to stay on Kelly Pelton's good side. Yeah. <laughs> stay on that good talker. side. He's yeah, the, he's got the club. The hair buster 4,000. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are we actually getting all these? Yeah. So, yeah, we're So we've done doing splitting it. hairs. We've done a biker and a shotgun, naked and afraid. Now we got uh, the dog and the lawnmower. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to pick the dog. The dog. That's uh, That was one of your picks. That was one of my picks. That was yeah. actually one of your picks from the infamous Matt Gordon. So <laughs> check out this episode. One last the story, story. man. <clears throat> the dog. The dog. This one's fun, too. They're all fun. This is a love story. Um, my second job when I was in high school, my first job, I was a sign holder for a little bar in downtown. And it was just fun, but I found out really quickly that being a redhead and being outside all day is a bad decision. Oh, my God. Um, so it's been like half my paycheck on sunscreen. I was like, I just can't do this anymore. <laughs> um, but uh, my second job, I got a, a job at KFC and a and It was like, I was so pumped. I was working with like three of my best friends and we were just all having a blast well ended up doing okay there and got promoted up and i stayed there for four years um i just i they worked with my schedules they were great about working with my college work and all that 
And uh, I, I got promoted to a shift supervisor position, which is like an assistant manager. And so the important note with this is that I was running the store while this was happening as a 16 year old. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Cause you're, you're mentally prepared for that. Exactly. Okay. And so this is, this is what, what goes down. I'm outside um, talking with our cook, Marco about the plans for that evening to do like our chicken stuff. This big old lifted truck pulls up and like we're used to that KFC in Cal it was in Castle Rock where I grew up. There's a lot of like Broncos players, Nuggets players and different like quasi famous people who live in Castle Rock mm -hmm. and would frequent our KFC and we would interact with them. My favorite one was Chris Birdman Anderson. You remember him on the Nuggets oh, back oh, in yeah. the day? Yeah. Yeah. He lived in, yeah, he lived in Castle Rock and he, he had this like 15 foot lifted monster truck and he would go through the drive through um, and yet we had to put it like on a stick on a bag and like pass it up to him. But he would get 60 hot wings after games and just go home and eat them all by himself. Out of boy. Yeah. Nice. Just mow them down. And he was this, like the nicest guy in the world to right. everybody in the store. But that's not always the case with the celebrities you interact with. Right. They're not always nice. Right. <laughs> the lifted truck in the parking lot pulls up and three people get out. And I sort of do like a. Oh, shit. Um, one taller guy. A shorter woman, kind of not like fat, but like um, bustier, bigger, bigger, um, and then a, a, another guy, uh, a little thicker, with like a long blonde mullet, and it clicks in my head. That's Dog the Bounty Hunter and his family. No, that's Dog the Bounty Hunter's family. They apparently they lived in Larkspur at the time, just down the way, and they wanted to come into KFC and get some food. I freak out. I'm like throw my pen up in the air and run in. Oh Jesus Christ! I just want to make sure everybody's like available because you know sometimes celebrities they'll call into corporate and like trash you if you're not available. Right. Yeah. And so um, the person at the front counter is 15. This is also important. <laughs> She is super shy and very mild, like uh, not meek, but just very quiet and kind. And Dog and his family are bounty hunters. Yeah, very um, over the top. And they they start ordering, and it's just like a typical order. But then it gets like escalated somehow and aggressive, and they're wow. being mean to this fifteen year old. Well, we I make their food personally and give it to them. It's correct, Dog. If you ever watch this, <laughs> your order was correct, okay? Some bitch. I need you to know that. Um, but apparently it wasn't for his wife. Um, and rest in peace, because from what I understand, she's passed away since then. But um, Did the chicken kill her? I, she, it was A&W, so they got burgers. Okay. okay. Um, it was wrong. And she just starts berating the 15-year-old, like, you stupid son of a blah, 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 blah. And I'm not near them. I'm back in the back doing prepping. And I sort of hear, I'm like, what the hell is going on? And then I hear dogs starting to scream at the point. I'm like, I got to go kick dog the fucking bounty hunter out of this KFC right now. <laughs> 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 like, oh, my God, I got to do this. So I walk out, and I'm like, look, you can't talk to my employees this way. You got to go. And then he starts yelling at me. I gotta stop. Yeah, yeah, go, I, go, go. One thing that I think the thing I'm picturing most is on The Simpsons. The kid, oh, his voice yes. always breaks. Like, exactly. <laughs> I, my name's Matt. I'm the manager, yes. dog. And you, you gotta go. <laughs> Look, Mr. Bounty Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> that's. <laughs> Before you go, can I get your autograph? My mom's a huge fan. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what went down. Um, I, I had to kick him out. I told him, look, I'm going to call the cops if you guys don't go. It's, I'm going to trespass you right now, and you're never welcome here ever again. Um, that's not how you talk to a 15-year-old. And I'm like, I'm 16. I'm running this place. And, like, you guys can yell at me all you want, but you can't yell at the 15-year-old who's right over here. Right, right. Um, and, you know, they leave. The son, it turns out that the taller guy that was with them was their son. And I, I should have known it at the time, but, like, I remembered it after the fact. Um, he walks them out to the car and comes back and he gives us a hundred bucks. He's like, I'm so sorry. I don't know what the hell was up their ass today and whatever was going on. Like, I hope this covers whatever's like, just please have a good day. And I'm sorry again. Right. And I'm like, dude, it's not you. It's your psycho parents. <laughs> like, <that's>, <laughs> You're fine. Yeah. Um, but like, please let them know, like they're never welcome here ever again. <laughs> and if I see them here, I will call the cops on site and they will get arrested. Like, right. Right. 16 years old. Um, the son leaves and my coworker's just like shaking, you know, right, she's right. freaking out. Yeah. I was like, of course she's freaking out. You just got yelled at by a guy who tackles people and arrests them for a living. Like <laughs> right, right. I'd be a little afraid too. Um, at the end of it all, she calms down. We get back to going and I've never seen dog, the bounty hunter since he never came back to KFC when I really? was there. And I told my manager to Dave, Dave machete, my man, Dave, I love Dave. 
Um, I, I told him, like, hey, dude, I, I had to trespass Dog the Bounty Hunter the other day. Uh, I hope that's cool with you. Right, <laughs> He's right, like, right. what the hell happened? I was like, I'll throw it up. You know, we could watch the cameras, and you could watch everything that oh. happened as it happens. It's all recorded. And so he's watching Dog and his wife, ever, like, lose their shit over freaking hamburgers <laughs> and me yelling at Dog the Bounty Hunter to get the hell out of the store. He's like, no, you, you did it right. You did the right thing. He goes, I can't imagine that was, you know, easy to deal with for you. I'm right. like, you're telling me, like... <laughs> I, I don't want to do that ever again. That was crazy. I love it. Yeah. All right. That's it. the episode, uh, The Dog <laughs> by Matt Gordon. The Matt Gordon, which, by the way, thank you, Matt Gordon, for letting us uh, continue to do the podcast here, the uh, Brush Chamber of Commerce here in the Sands Theater. So Maybe you can provide some coveralls next time. Yeah, some <laughs> it's a little chilly in here, but we found the, the heater thing. Mm, that's, uh, yeah, nice. It's helping, though, yes? It is nice. Yeah, no, bit. I okay. do cool. think so. My eyelashes are melting, but we're good. <laughs> we're good. It's all Campfire. good. Campfire. That's, yeah, we got two fat guys on this side, so we didn't yeah, worry about no. it. Yeah, no. Yeah. So I'll let you start off the uh, conversation, Matt, since you picked it. I just, the reason why I picked that is it absolutely cracked me up. And then the fact that you have this <laughs> 16-year-old kicking out a bounty hunter that wrestles like <laughs> cr- Bad convicted guys. criminals. And, the, it just, and then the, in the episode, we were talking about like how his voice was cracking and all that. So I just pictured like um, Shaggy from Scooby-Doo back there. Like, you got to go, mister. I don't like you anymore. So. What are you kidding? Like, I would have been more afraid of Beth. Oh, yeah. Right, dog? I got this. The wife is scary. She's a bad bitch. I yeah. think she died, too, he said. Yeah, right? yeah. She, she died. Did. She passed away. She's probably raising hell up there, too. Right? Probably. <laughs> Some sixteen-year-old <laughs> angels like look, bitch. <laughs> you can't have your. Did you? You gotta be nice burger. to me now. Did you watch the the the, the dog the show? Dog mm-hmm. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I never watched. It. I never seen. You it. never saw one episode. Nope. And you were missing out. Really? Yeah. Mm. You're like, there's how do there's families like this that live just like, like this. the the best version of white trash. <laughs> yes. Really? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, they really are. They were taking so cool. in bad guys and. You know. Yeah, and then they're like, we're like, when they would catch whoever they were looking for, they were like super cool to them and talking to them, yeah. like turning their life around. And yeah. I'll let you have one more smoke before you go in. And, yeah. You know, I'll let you have a cigarette, but don't fuck up my cheeseburger. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly right. I know you killed 14 people and you robbed that store. You fucked up my said, burger and I'm going to beat your ass. But I said, no pickles, bitch. Don't fuck with my food. That's what I'm getting from this. Don't fuck with my food. And I get it. You caught the episode. What yes, did, yes. What did you think about yeah. that one? Oh, my gosh. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. The fact that the age, the age is the best part of that, right? Yeah, just 16. Because that's scary. I have a 16-year-old, and I have a like soon-to-be 15-year-old, and I know like how timid they are, and I can't imagine them oh, standing God, I would have just, he probably would have died. Right? My, <laughs> just pee my pants, and I'm leaving. That's my, it. I my quit. daughter's 17, and I couldn't get her to go ask somebody for a pin one day. <laughs> <laughs> but Matt's a very, very, uh, that's just Matt Gordon for you. Yeah. He is very much the person that he's funny. He's, he's very lighthearted. But when it comes down to serious business, Matt gets serious in like the drop of a hat. Like business is business. Yeah, so, I don't think uh, I've ever seen the serious side of him. I, yeah, I have. You know, yeah. I have. And being the head of the Chamber of Commerce now, you know, he's doing a great job. Mm-hmm. And he will continue to do a good job because he's got, his, he's got a little heart for this stuff. And I'm kissing his ass because we need to use this theater some more. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring in Beth. There. Oh, she's yeah. gone. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lucky oh, for God, you. Get a, get a right? Ouija board. You we'll surprise see. him. You're on guess who the guest, ho- guest is today. <laughs> he all just like hurdles up in a little fetal position. That's right. I'm sorry, Beth. <laughs> you know what it's like to have to get some ninjas and, and get them off. Do you know what it's like to have to pull an onion off your hamburger? <laughs> 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 And you know damn well that there's a loogie involved in that. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. I mean. I don't even know if they got their food, though. No. No, Matt because kicked them out. Because he booted them, so. <laughs> and their son, remember, he said their son came up, gave him 100 bucks, said, I'm yep. sorry about this. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's gotten into it, but Matt was <laughs> like. crazy. He's like, crazy. <laughs> Did you guys work for fast food? Oh, Anybody? dude, come on. No. You did it. Did you? No, I was I, driving I, tractors and combines. That's true. Come on. That's true. I, I worked at Subway and Pizza Hut. Oh, mm-hmm. so you did, kind of. Yeah. I mean, I work small town, you know, Ant Colorado Cafe, but no fast food. Mm. Which is kind of the yeah, same. Kinda. It's thankless. Yeah. It it's is. thankless. Yeah. I mean, give those people 15 bucks an hour because the job sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, it sucks. <laughs> they deserve it. Although, I mean, you'll never see me get ugly with anybody making my food ever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe after I've eaten the mess, I'll be like, I hate you, you know, but not <laughs> until I get the goods. The funniest thing we used to do to him at the restaurant I worked at, 
is uh, when they <laughs> when your buddies that come in, you know, the top of the the soda lids, like the plastic mm-hmm. lids. We put one of those in the middle of the hamburger, <laughs> <laughs> and we'd sit there and watch them bite into it like a dark. Because <laughs> <laughs> you ain't biting through that plastic <laughs> lid, man. If you do, you got some fucking goddamn uh, witch teeth or yes. something. Yeah. But <laughs> we would sit there and watch them try to bite through this hamburger <laughs> and laugh hysterically. <laughs> and would they bring it up then and be like? Oh, yeah. Oh, it got ugly, you know, and it got worse that we were all laughing at them. Like, there's yeah. a couple 16-year-olds who they wouldn't ever allow to run anything Yeah, laughing at them. Like You, you don't want to burger. know what goes behind the counter oh. of those things, you know what I mean? No. Like, don't be mean because they will get you. Yeah, right. You might not know it, but they'll get you. Right. Along the same lines as the lid, when I worked at Subway, my mom and sister came in. So me and um, Sean was the guy I was working with. We got a piece of cellophane, and we did the meat and the cheese, and then we put the cellophane and then all my sister's toppings on top of that. <laughs> so she bit that sandwich and pulled it away, and it just, like, pulled oh. all the toppings right off the sandwich. <laughs> That's perfect. She pissed. Oh, she was furious. <laughs> That's perfect. And the thing is, it was in the front seat of my mom's car, because they were sitting out in front of the restaurant, and my mom was backing out, and my sister takes a bite, and she's just like... Got a white sweater on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? They used to, uh, whoever worked the grill, they'd have their like Pepsi up there. They got ice cold Pepsi. You know what I mean? It's hotter yeah. than that grill, man. <laughs> hotter than shit. And if you didn't watch your Pepsi, what people would do, because you'd have to uh, lit a straw on it, they'd pour salt down the straw. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, you're just sweating. It's like in the middle of summer in Brush, Colorado. It's a million degrees outside, and you're <laughs> slaving over a grill inside. <laughs> you grab that nice cold Pepsi, you slug it, and it's salt. Oh, <laughs> that's terrible. Yeah. So then you do this. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know if you're dying, if you're choking on something. You're just choking because there's no more moisture. Mm, literally, I'm dying. <laughs> yeah, like, Our favorite trick used to be like, okay, and I'm just going to use McDonald's. It wasn't McDonald's, but I'm just going to use McDonald's, okay? They'd come up and be like, uh, yeah, I'd like a number two with, you know, the two cheeseburgers and a large fry and be like, okay, I have a number 10 with a chicken sandwich and a Coke. <laughs> no. <laughs> they would repeat it and we would just laugh and we would like do it wrong till basically they would drive off, oh, right? <laughs> Think of all the different things. Oh, you know, you're at McDonald's and I have one Arby's regular. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're lucky you didn't get some fat guy like me. After the third dog, I'd be like, fucking whatever. Put it in the bag. I'll eat it. I don't care. Pop a pizza. I don't care. <laughs> Just get get it in the bag. Yeah. Get it out the window. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Then, then, speaking of like difficult customers, though, I'm not even gonna pretend it was a Wendy's. I've talked about it. If they're gonna sue yeah. me, it's already gonna happen. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, there was a lady used to come by, and this is the early ni- mid '90s. So the Junior Bacon Cheeseburgers were 99 cents. Mm-hmm. So, oh, the junior nice. cheese so she would order 25 of them. Whoa, that Holy bitch. crap. Right. That was bitch. she feeding the neighborhood? Well, all her kids. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> welfare check came in. And we, got, we got a big wheel of cheese and 25 extra bucks. Let's go. <laughs> so uh, she'd come by and she'd do the same thing every time. She called back and be like, you shorted me too. <laughs> oh, gee, I know. Oh, fuck. It got to the point where four of us would count them. <laughs> you know? Like, we count, make sure it's 25. I would have gave her, like, 27 or 28, no, <laughs> just no. to make sure. That's not how we rolled it, yeah. <laughs> okay. I would count them in front of her as you put them we in did. the bag. We yes. were well, We were counting, so she called back, and by that time, I'd made manager because I was the <laughs> dumbest one there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she called back and be like, you shorted me three. I'm like, no, we didn't. <laughs> She's like, are you calling me a liar? I go, yep. well, if you're saying we shorted you, then yes, ma'am. <laughs> We didn't short you shit, you know. So she's like, well, she's maybe like "Can I, I speak uh, to your manager?" She goes, "Maybe I should call back during the day and uh, have a talk with your manager." I'm like, "That'd be great. Tell her that you're the one that gets shorted every that brings the coupon for you know forty fucking hamburgers because you save them up, you know. At the end of the month, that's what we get coupons. So go ahead and tell her that I'm the one that denied you your food. You know what I mean? Because nobody else wants this thankless shithole job. So go right ahead and wrap me out." That's how I, now that I think about it, now what I should have done is took her in that stand. The next time she came in, shorted her. <laughs> you want something to cry about? I'll give you something to cry about. Listen, lady, we've already had this dance. Hey, you shorted me through that and short you shit as I'm chewing on a hamburger. <laughs> Joke's on you. I shorted you five. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was a – but, yeah, you, you told me you were going to pick this that episode. It, the tough part was I've edited all these myself. So it's hard for me to remember every episode. So as we're going through, and Adam goes, I'm going to pick Dog from Matt. And I, I said, you know what? 
excellent pick, mm-hmm. man, because I we did laugh pretty hard at that. So That's funny. All right, one last one, the infamous one, lawnmower. That <laughs> was your pick, Densia. Okay. okay, I just got to say. Oh, oh, I messed up. It's not called the lawnmower. It's called my lawnmower oh. lives a quarter mile at a time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you want to play it? That's the, that's the name of it. I'm sorry, go ahead. Right, okay. So this, first of all, I just got to say, Yolanda, I don't know. I don't want to be like a stalker, but also I love you. <laughs> I do. You're so funny. Like everything about it made me laugh. Um, my favorite was the Queenie Weenie. I didn't know those existed, oh, but I, I need ex- to have that. I knew exactly what she was talking about I, as no, soon as I she said it. it. I don't know if they do them anymore. Mm. Okay. Okay. Nope. Didn't know. <laughs> but I also love how she's like, we were wasted and we went and got a six pack and a pound a piece. And I was like, <laughs> girl, get it. Yes. I love everything about her story. Um, I just, I, I love it all. I love the way she told it. I love the humor in it. I love the references. <clears throat> I got you. a lot. You're my girl. Before we get the rest of our feedback, let's check the story. Sorry, I interrupted you a little okay. bit. So. No, no, no. You're cool. My lawn and more lives a quarter mile at a time. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. So, uh, again, back to my stunt double. My sister and I just tearing shit up, getting in trouble everywhere. Uh, we had moved to Greeley, Mom, Ty and I had. And so we would come back on our days off and things like that. And we would hang out with family and just kind of do our own thing. And um, I had gone out. My sister and I were just you know, partying up and having a good time. And I mean, we were out drinking until like three, four o'clock in the morning, come home and we are hungover. And we're like, you know what we need? Tacos. So <laughs> it's like two o'clock in the afternoon and we're like, yeah, tacos. So we go to Taco John and we order these, uh, the six pack and a pound, you know, but we ordered our own each, you know, each yep. of us got six pack and a pound full well forgetting that it was family dinner night. So we're like, shit. So we powered through this and we get home. It's like maybe four o'clock by the time we got home, four thirty, something like that. And my mom was like, Oh yeah, dinner's gonna be on the table in like thirty minutes. Now my mama is mayonnaise, however, she decided that the Mexican life was the life she lived. So <laughs> you don't tell your Mexican mama that you're not gonna eat her food on family night. Right. Right. right? So she's like, Yeah, I made meatloaf. And I'm like, Oh god, <laughs> <laughs> my sister and I are sitting there and you know, my eyes are brown, not because I'm full of shit, but because I was full of food that day. Right, right. And we're sitting there and she's like, makes us this plate, this heaping plate with mashed potatoes and gravy and, you know, the five pounds of meatloaf. And my sister and I are like, oh, we can do this, dude. We can do this. Now we're still hungover. <laughs> still pretty hungover and so we get through this meatloaf and we're sitting on the couch and mom's like you girls didn't have seconds you always have seconds and i'm like all right mom hit us hit us again so <laughs> back off mayonnaise i'm trying yeah. all right yeah. i'm looking over at my dad and i'm like bro are you gonna rescue us because you know we're hungover yeah. like she does it but you know it <laughs> you caught us coming in the house this morning <laughs> So <laughs> we go for round two and it's like two hours later and my mom's like, you guys okay? Cause you look really, really sick. And so, you know, we spill our guts. We're just like, yeah, this is what happened. So we're already in trouble. And she's like, well, I told you girls, you didn't need to be drinking like that. Well, I, you're still going to go mow your grandma's lawn tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, we'll take care of it, mom. Don't worry about it. Okay. So what do our dumb asses do? Go out drinking again. <laughs> of course. We got all that food. We got to absorb the food with alcohol. Right. right. It's, it's, it's right. a good plan. Yeah, it's a good plan. Because vodka <laughs> usually dissipates food in your system, right? That's what Bro, <laughs> I'm not a frat boy. I don't drink vodka. Okay. This is Jack Daniels all the way. Okay. All day. Redneck. <laughs> so do I. That's my thing. Yeah, redneck. redneck. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. I'll all take right. it. Right. A little bit of, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so I digress. We, uh, Get shit faced again. Roll in four or five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's Sunday morning at this point. And we're like dead ass all day, hungover. And just like my mom's like, seriously, girls, you have to go. You need to mow the lawn. Mom, we'll do it. Okay, we will. So we're like, you know what sounds real good? A queenie weenie. <laughs> so the I, hell's a queenie weenie? <laughs> the queens in Fort Morgan serves hot dogs behind the bar. <laughs> what? <laughs> a queenie weenie. Just will swallow a hole. <laughs> Right? Because then you got to call Tyler for the Heimlich. (laughs) So we're like, yeah, let's go hit the the queens. We're going to get a queenie weenie, you know, have a couple drinks, you know, hair the dog the bitch up. Why not? (laughs) So here we are. We're like, yeah, 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 we got this. So next thing you know, it's like five o'clock and my mom's on the phone. "Ah, uh, Your grandma says that you haven't gone over to mow the lawn yet. 
oh yeah, we'll take care of that right now. So we load up in Bear's truck and we're like, all right, we gotta go get the mower. So we head over, we get the mower and we head to grandma's house and we mow the lawn. It's just like, it's still pretty buzzed and still pretty uh, hungover and you know, full of queenie weenie. So we're like, yeah, it's great, it's great. So <laughs> we're, grandma lives over kind of by the stakeout, right? So you're over on 8th, right. right? So we're headed back and at that point in time, we lived on Sherman. And so what well, my parents did, and so when we visited, we'd always go back home. And so <laughs> we're coming home on 8th and coming up to the cross of 8th and Sherman. And in Fort Morgan, it's one of the ones that has, it kind of goes as a downslope as you get to Sherman. So we're, we're getting there and we're just both kind of laughing it off. We're like, dude, we, we got it done. We, we got this. You want to go out and drink some more tonight? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. Okay, cool. So <laughs> we're like, yeah, we got leftover meatloaf at the house. We'll just, you know, hit some of that and we can drink all night. So <laughs> we're we'll hit some of that. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's how meatloaf, yeah. Right? I'll, I'll tap me some meatloaf. That's exactly, right. That's right. exactly. <laughs> So we're rolling down the road and coming up about, I'd say like a quarter block from the stop sign right there at Sherman and 8th. And all of a sudden, like I, I look over, I'm sitting passenger bears driving. I look over and I'm like, what the fuck is that? And there's a lawnmower and it just like rolls up and stops right at the stop sign right up next to us. And I'm like, ah, it's some fucking idiot lost his mower. <laughs> He's chasing it down the street. And I'm like, ah, what a dumbass. I look at my sister. We both look to the back of the truck at the same time. We forgot to close the tailgate. <laughs> it's our fucking mower. <laughs> it fell, fell out of the truck and just rolled up on the <laughs> Yo, bear, check it out. That looks like a lawnmower. <laughs> Oh shit. She's like, oh shit, that is our mower. <laughs> she's like, it's got the key. Because we had the key started. <laughs> she's like, don't look at me. I'm all fucked up on the meatloaf. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're just like, really shit. Hmm. Like, it had stopped like right beside us. And I'm like, well, damn, you lost. <laughs> <laughs> It lives a quarter mile at a time, but it didn't win a quarter mile at a time. That's awesome. So we loaded up just to drive across the street because we lived in the house just right there on Sherman. <laughs> Needless to say, we never told my mom. We just didn't let her know. We're just like, ah. Go, yeah, we mowed grandma's yard. It's cool, mom. We got <laughs> We get some meatloaf. <laughs> Yo, mayonnaise. Our lawnmower is crazy fast, right? <laughs> we told my dad. My dad's just in there like, yeah, it sounds like something I would do. And I was yeah. like, yeah, we learned from the best. I mean, yeah. I, you taught me how to drive. You taught me how to drink. You taught me how to race lawnmowers. Hey, we're good. All right, so that was the uh, story. <laughs> My lawnmower lives a quarter mile at a time. Dency, that was your pick. We got your mm -hmm. take. Michelle, you enjoyed the story? Absolutely. It sounds like uh, she'd be the girl you'd want to call if you didn't want your lawn mowed. <laughs> 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 and just want to go have a good time. Yeah, there you go. Right? Yeah. There you go. And you had to fight like crazy, Adam. Yeah, I oh I loved it. It was it was funny. I was laughing so hard when I was listening to this episode. It was <laughs> it was a good time. If I had to explain it to somebody, like I was kind of telling you guys, it's like a stoner movie from the nineties <laughs> about two people not getting high but getting shit faced the whole time, and then figuring out the next day how to beat the hangover <laughs> and get the most mundane task of all time taken care of of mowing their grandmother's lawn right yeah and their mom the whole time is like a will smith song it's like <laughs> get your grandmother's lawn mowed you know and they're like we're on it mom shut up mom <laughs> <laughs> i think my favorite part of the whole thing is where meatloaf is the thing that gets it, it's like shit hits the fan like if, god forbid one of them has some oh. weird disease yeah. like <laughs> the other one would be like Hey, doctor, listen, we can get some meatloaf in our ass. That's what's going on. That'll, gonna, that'll fix what else. It'll do. make whatever's better. Yeah, so. fix what I'm with you, the best part is like, hit me, mom. You guys don't need him enough. Hit me. Pop seconds. Hit me again, mom. If we ever do bullhucker merch, we need a shirt that says we got to get some meatloaf in this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so great. Copyright pending. <laughs> Hashtag Queenie Weenie. Hashtag <laughs> Queenie Weenie. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. my, my mom, it was like just what you said. Mom's like, I could be her best friend if I was younger. <laughs> 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 
Come on, Mom. You don't have to be younger. I love Yolanda and Tyler. I'm so happy when they decide to come on mm. because they are a funny couple together, you know? So funny. I would love to hear the fucking fights they have. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I want to start them just so I can see it. I don't know what it is. I think Tyler probably gives up. He, he, he hits like the... He, I don't want to say it. it's like he tests his boundaries probably uh-huh. when he hits a boundary and she gets like that. Uh, if you could see my eyebrows right now, <laughs> as he always says, you know. Uh, but I, I really do. I really like these. And I worked at Pepsi when they worked at Walmart. Mm. So I dealt with them quite a bit. Both so, of them? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. They both worked at Walmart. And uh, and Yolanda was the one I'd be like, I'd have to ask stuff for. And she's like, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, she's like, fuck this place, right? I get but, 10 bucks an hour. <laughs> but then some days, like, She'd go on a limb for me because they pissed her off, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be like, Yolanda, I need this. She's like, you know what? Do whatever you want. I don't give a shit. Fuck these people. I'm like, all right. That's what I'm talking about, Yolanda, you know? Uh-huh. The next That's day my that, girl. That they displayed me down. And she'd be like, I don't know, man. So that's our stories for that's our that's our episode one for the new year. Like I said, happy new year. I hope you've enjoyed this. Happy new uh, year. Happy new year. It's been fun looking back at 2021. Mm-hmm. Um we we didn't start for God. When we start, it was like May. Yeah, wasn't it was because of the COVID thing. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I had got COVID last year, and uh, that's kind of when we decided. It was actually the episode we were going to do Bill Robar or no Kelly Pelton and I can't remember who else we were going to do. And I had called them and said, "Oh, it's Bill Robar, doing <coughs> Bill." And I said, "Look, man, I got these symptoms. Let's be safe." Mm-hmm. And so then it just everything got kind of put on the back burner. We had just got done doing Terry Barton, Greg, and. Alan Alan Goodwin, Goodwin. And, uh, and this went away. And then I started missing this podcast. Mm-hmm. And so I called a few guys and talked about it. And, and we decided no, we'd, uh, yeah, we'd make yeah. another run at it. So yeah. it's been a cool year. It's been a really fun year. And I'm glad we got to do this. We have one more episode after this next week. So uh, <coughs> check it out. We're going to have actually uh, another, another person who follows the podcast. Someone who, uh, who, who constantly comments on the YouTube page, nice. always tries to guess. They're great. My mom was this <coughs> week. And so she'll be next week. So. Hey guys, thank you so much. I'm Lou Sundstrom. I'm Adam Vokey. Michelle Staley. I'm Desi Kuhn.